Hello, welcome back to our series. In the last video, we explored the electrical design plan for my off-roading camper. Today, we're delving into the process of designing and building the frame. And don't forget, I'll be sharing the complete camper design plan for free once it's all finalized. The idea of an off-roading camper started when a set of Jeep tires became surplus after a lift of my Jeep. I thought I could repurpose them for a teardrop camper. Ironically, when a camper was finally complete, those tires were never used. With no prior fabrication experience, the camper idea is merely a concept in my head. To learn how to build a camper, I binge watched a ton of YouTube videos. Gradually, I formed a vision for my own off-roading camper. Here's the outlines of the main features I envision. Now the camper is built. Let's check how I fared against this original requirement. A total height clearance under seven feet. And also a minimum ground clearance to match Jeeps, which I believe it's 12 inches. And also a minimum 48 inches of uh, cabin height from the floor to the ceiling. Those are three conflicting requirements. So I think I ended up with a 15 inch ground clearance and I got 49 inches cabin from the floor to the ceiling height. I believe for the the total height clearance originally was under seven feet, but since I had to modify the solar panel, I believe now it's probably a couple inches above seven feet now. Since my towing vehicle is a Jeep, I want this to be light, about a thousand pounds of dry weight and uh, maybe 1,500 pounds loaded. After I completed it, I never really weighed it. I suppose ballpark number probably is pretty close enough. For the frame dimension, I want it 5 by 8, so it's a 5 feet width and uh, 8 feet from this end <clears throat> and to this end. So 5 feet will give me enough space to sleep two person and eight feet frame will give me over six feet of sleeping space after the gather kitchen. So I actually have a six four sleeping space inside. Let's uh, take a look at the frame design. With the sketch up as my canvas, I sketched out the blueprint for the frame. The first decision is to choose a town style for the frame. There are three options, straight, A-frame, and a composite. I opted for a composite style for added strength. I deliberated over crucial decisions like a tongue length and axle positioning. I was quite surprised to learn there's no exact science on either of these critical parameters. The general rule of thumb for the tongue is a longer tongue, within a reason, provides more stability. Everything considered as settled on 15 inch for the tongue length. For the axle position, I went with the 60-40% rule, with 60% of the frame at the front because it adds more tongue weight. The ideal tongue weight should be around 15% of the full trailer weight. The other not so critical decision is the angle of the two front beams that form the tip of the A shape. Again, there's no precise science on this. I selected a 50 degree angle based on some common commercial trailer design. With no prior fabrication experience, I first purchased a welder. Then I took two lessons at a local welding shop I embarked on the construction journey right after that. For the material, I selected 2x2 two two and 1 square tubing 
acknowledging the potential for rust inside the tube. I may try angle irons if I build again. Also, I think a 2x3 tubing could be a better choice for the center beam of the pump. As I started making the frame, the quest for perfection within 1 16th inch tolerance became a daunting challenge. I freaked out initially when I noticed the diagonal lenses differ by 1 8. I ended up cutting the frame and rewilded it again. But have I achieved 1 16th precision? I doubt so. My tape measure is only to the 1 16th precision. Any imperfection on the corner while I grind the steel can easily be 1 16th. I also noticed the tubes were distorted from the heat. I bit the bullet and continued with the build. It was such a huge drag on my mind during the entire build. Until later on, I saw a video series discussing the welding precision. I'll share the link in the description below. You can form your own opinion. If you're interested, you can also check out his uh, follow-up video. Let me get under the camper so I can show you some of the details of the frame. So as you can see here, I was trying to avoid drilling holes through the, the tubes of the frame. What I ended up doing is I added this uh, gusset at the corner of the frame. And that, where there's no corner, I added this uh, extra tubing piece. So what I ended up doing is I drove the hose through the floor and connected to the gusset. There were a total of five of this uh, gusset on each side of the frame. Like one here, two here, three, uh, so four, five. So five on this side and also five on this side. So a total a ten of this bolts connected the floor to the frame. When installing the timber and axle onto the frame, I also try to avoid drilling holes. So instead I welded this uh, timber and axle to the frame directly. Now looking back, I think welding this generated excessive heat. I don't think that's good for the rubber. So if you have to weld, probably don't weld at the top portion. Uh, or you can consider just bolted on. The other challenge I faced is to create the fender for this uh, giant tire. I ended up actually cutting this uh, fender three times and remade them. What I eventually did was I, instead of welding this uh, fender onto the frame, I actually welded some square tubing pieces onto the frame. So they serve like some sort of like a sleeve. So I can slide the fender onto the, into the sleeves and drill some holes. Now the fender is actually removable. If I loosen the bolts, I can remove the fender. So that makes life a little bit easier when I work on the installing the cabin. And also if I need to service the axle or anything, so uh, or tire, I can remove the, the fender. For the tire and the fender clearance, I would go probably two and a half plus inches on the front and the back. On the top, I originally went with, I think a five inches or so clearance, but with the load of the camper, and also I think the suspension also settles a little bit. 
I think I go, only got like about a three inches now. So when you can set the the height, the top clearance of the tire a little bit higher will help. A future idea is right now I only have this uh, fixed foot uh, jack so I can stabilize the camper when I camp but I also like to have a wheel this is a temporary I like the wheel so I can move the uh, camper easily so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a identical like a jack like this except uh, instead of fix the foot I will have a wheel on this side then I'll have uh, you know fixed foot on this side a wheel on this side and then I can adjust it based on whatever I need. I also learned the hard way. Don't try to store your jack like this, although it's very convenient. But I learned the hard way when you do off-roading, like this one. I was storing horizontally. It hit the rocks because the boulder rocks are so big. It hits those things and just bend this over. So what I doing now is I just uh, store this jack inside the the pump box inside here when I travel when I need it I just pull it out and install it as we conclude I hope you find the information helpful if you are contemplating building your own teardrop trailer remember every setback is an opportunity for growth stay tuned for the full design plan release and until next time, happy building. Thanks for watching.